<sighs> oh right time to create a new next.js project this will be awesome so let me run npx create dash next dash app to create a new next.js project and let me click on enter wait what new next.js version you have to be kidding me i just learned next.js 14 now we have next.js 15 am i a joke to you guys man again i have to go to the docs and see what's new let me go to the docs Oh man, that's what I'm talking about. Every time I'm ready to dive into a new project, create my SaaS, make my one billion dollars, there's a new version of Next.js. And it's not just a new version, I have to learn all of the new things again. Again, everything's better, alpha. No, I can't do this anymore. I'm becoming a plumber. This is enough for me. Yeah, no, I can't. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is John Marshall and in this video I want to talk about my problems and maybe also your problems in Next.js and actually the recent releases of Next.js. Now before I actually get started, what I want to say is that Next.js is incredible. I use it for all my projects, my YouTube projects, my personal projects and also for my website janmarshall.com. It has a lot of features which I don't want to miss like for example caching, layouts, server components, server actions, just things which I use daily and make my life way easier. Nevertheless, this does not mean that I don't have problems with Next.js and that's exactly what I want to talk about today. Now the problem isn't actually the frequency of updates, so Next.js 13, 14 and 15 all happened in one year. So we had three major releases in one year. Now that's a lot, but I don't really think that's a big problem. My problem is actually more that the features on which the framework builds are actually marked as better, uh, alpha and not stable and this is just something that does not sit right with me. This, for example, for myself and maybe also for you, creates a lot of confusion but also instability in my projects and maybe also in your projects. You have to refactor sometimes code, some things don't work and it's just something which you don't want to have uh, if you build websites, you want to have a good developer experience and what I just talked about isn't a good developer experience. And now I know some people might say, hey, innovation. I mean, innovation is great. Next.js innovates a lot. We saw that with all the recent releases with the app router, there's a lot of innovation. But at the end of the day, innovation should have some sort of cap when you actually deal with production grade websites and when you build a production grade framework. So let's imagine the following, you work on a production grade project or website with a team and you uh, see that there's a new version, for example Next.js 15 which got released I don't know two weeks, maybe three weeks ago and what you hope, yeah, maybe a bit of better performance, maybe a bit new features which are maybe marked as stable, maybe better, that's fine. And at the end of the day, what you see is, hey, a lot of things have changed. A lot of code has been changed. A lot of things have actually changed. The core fundamentals have changed. And that's not what you want. When you update your new version, you don't always want to actually throw out your code. Again, create new code because things have changed. This is not something which you want because at the end of the day, it makes you a slower developer. So this leads to a situation where actually developers have to spend a lot of extra time to troubleshoot and fix core issues which are not documented and also a lot of uh, people still haven't really actually figured out. This at the end of the day actually disrupts your workflow, the uh, workflow of the actual core maintainers of the project and just in general is something which you don't really want. And now you might say, hey Jan, please give me an example. What exactly do you mean? So one year ago, I created a video, Next.js 13 versus Remix.1. Now in this video, I talked about the pros and cons of the individual framework, what I liked, what I did not like, just in general, my honest opinion on the two frameworks. And one thing which I mentioned inside of this video was stability. Now at that time, Next.js 13 got released with the app router, server components, and all the bells and whistles, and it was great. But one thing which I explicitly mentioned in this video is that I didn't like that the app router got rushed. At least that was my opinion. Next.js 13, the app router was marked as stable, but the underlying tech and the underlying features were marked as beta and alpha and just in general not stable. Let me give you an example. The use form status hook, the use form state hook, server actions, they were all not marked as stable, while the framework itself, so Next.js 13, was marked as stable. And this just does not sit right with me. So if you try to build a website and you have server actions, but the team tells you, hey, they are not stable, but the app world is stable, yeah, I don't know. I really don't like that. I want that the actual framework and the core technology, which uh, is around the framework, 
works. But now you might say, hey Jan, that's one year ago. Who cares today? Everything now works. Server actions are uh, fully stable. The use from status hook is stable. The use from state hook is stable. Everything works. Who cares? Well, today something else has changed. So I already told you, I think three weeks ago, Nextjs 15 got released and there are not a lot of new features like there's uh, partial pre-rendering, which is better, it's cool, but it isn't really core. So I don't really care that it's beta or alpha. It's fine, it's there. You can use it if you want to, you can test it out. And that's also a great thing that uh, actually Nextjs did, that they actually put it behind an actual feature flag. But one thing which they have changed in Nextjs 15 is caching. So in Next.js 13, when they released the app router, the actual core fundamental of caching was that everything was pre-rendered. So if you actually um, deployed your website to, for example, to your cell, your whole site was static since it was actually pre-rendered. And at the start, it was actually quite annoying. I myself also found it annoying and also other developers found it annoying. There were a lot of bugs. You don't really understand why some things were cached and some things not. And also, for example, wow time last, so the get request was cached. And just in general, people didn't really understand why it was happening. But now, since already one year has actually passed and we are now already at Next.js 15, most people now actually understand caching. They know the work around, they know what works, what does not work. And I, for myself, kind of started liking the caching system them of Next.js. And three weeks ago, Next.js, uh, I guess, released Next.js 15 and said, yeah, we are changing the caching system. You guessed it. And you know, I really didn't like this actual release. The Next.js 15 release was, in my actual viewpoint, a complete fail. Because people now finally understood the caching system in Next.js, the app router, that everything was pre-rendered, how to work around it. And now they said, hey, who cares? We are again reverting everything to no caching. Yeah. Not, not what I wanted, because if they actually had listened at the start when Next.js 13 got released, this whole problem would have never come. If they would have marked the Next.js 13 app router at the start as not stable, as better, people would have given the whole team feedback. They would say, hey, I don't like this, I wouldn't like that, please change that. The Next.js team would listen and just adapt the actual framework. And then once everything was ready, they could have actually released it as stable. And that's what they should have done. They didn't do that, and that's why we are now in this actual, I guess, a state where we have Next.js 13 caching and then with Next.js 15 caching again got actually changed a bit. So now what's the actual impact on us developers? What does it really change for us? So frequent updates mean actually that you have to constantly check documentation, release notes, see what changed, what bugs there are, and just in general, you have to be a bit more cautious. And let's also not forget about the learning curve. Each new version often comes with new best practices and deprecated features, like for example with caching, which means many developers have to keep learning and adapting. This can be especially tough for actual teams which uh, work on long-term projects. And for example, also my website, janmarshall.com, is a long-term project which I actually have to again adapt to Next.js 15 and also the new actual um, changes with Next.js 15. And now this actually also brings another point and that's documentation. Documentation is very, very important. At the end of the day, that's the only reliable source we developers have to learn more about the actual framework. Now, the thing is when you release new features, you of course have to document the new features. And the thing is, it's not easy. I, I know that it's not easy and I'm really not putting any blame on the Next.js team because docs are not easy. And the problem which many developers and also myself had with Next.js 13 is that the actual uh, whole framework was documented, but it wasn't really in depth. So when you had problems, you didn't really find the documentation helpful enough. And when you have new uh, actual releases now, with, like for example, with Next.js 15, it's again the same thing with the documentation. You have to again change the documentation. And that also means that you will find again spots in your documentation, which aren't perfect and then you again have problems and the DX again isn't great. So now you might ask me, hey Jan, what can you do? Since you're such a pro and you know everything, which I don't, what can the Next.js team do? What can developers do? Well, in my opinion and in my humble opinion, the Next.js team could be a bit more conservative with their releases. Now, I don't mean, hey, you should scratch releases. I think it's fine. They release a lot of cool stuff. But what I think they should change is actually marking things as stable when they are not. Again, if we look at Next.js 13, everything was fine. The, the router was, I guess, stable, but the underlying tech was not. And this is something which you don't really want. Or I guess I, as a developer, I don't want to have something like 
like that. Now, if they would actually change the approach to releasing versions, I think this would actually build a bit more trust in the actual framework and people would actually enjoy using the framework a lot more because you wouldn't really have to always change things in your code base just because some small fundamental, I guess, idea has again changed. So what's the conclusion of this video? Well, the conclusion is Next.js is a great framework, the ecosystem is great, the features are great, server actions are great, layouts are great, server components are great, everything is great. The only thing which is bugging me are the actual releases and I think the Next.js team could be a bit more cautious when actually releasing a new version and marking certain features as stable when they are actually not. And with that, what do you guys think? What do you think the Next.js team could maybe change to build a bit more trust, but also to make the developer experience a bit better? Let me know in the comments and now I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I can see you on the next video and now enjoy your day and bye!